So the title of this episode is whatever the opposite of clickbait is. Uh, unwatch bait. Oh, that sounds kind of creepy and gross. But anyway, today I'm going to talk about how I make a little money selling prints. I don't like to BS people. I don't think it's honest if I said I make a ton of money off of selling prints, but I do make a little bit. I have been improving my print store online. I have my little methods that I feel work for me. Maybe some of them can work for you as well. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about my process of selling my prints online. And none of this is sponsored by any of the companies I'm gonna mention, but I do use Squarespace, but they're not sponsoring this. And I do use Printique, which is a print service in the US that ships to US and Canada, and they're not sponsoring this either. So, I don't know, I just use them, I like them. There's other alternatives out there that might work better for you. And whether you can justify a print store, I, I don't know either, that's really up to you. That depends on how much money you wanna invest in this. But I just like to be honest, completely transparent with you guys. It's a ridiculously saturated market selling prints. I mean, everybody does it. There's tons of photographers out there. There's tons of amateur and pro photographers. But what I think is rather interesting is I don't think that pros have a huge advantage because I think when it comes down to it, when it comes down to selling prints, or at least for the masses, I'm not talking about edition prints or limited edition prints or stuff that goes through galleries. For most people, I think it really comes down to how you package it, how you market it, and also how you network in your inner circle. I think that's way more important than your name and your clout and your resume as a photographer. I just think it is, I don't know. Maybe it's fair, maybe it's not, I don't know, but I just find that if you package it right, market it right, whether you're an amateur or pro, the quality doesn't really matter a ton. Of course you wanna take better pictures in general and you wanna have better images, but I don't think that holds nearly as much weight as some of the other stuff I'm gonna talk about today. So I'm gonna tell you my process. So first, let's start with the collection of images, the images that you're gonna put on your website or wherever you're gonna sell them. So for me, what I like to do is pick about 15 to 20 images, no more than that. I see a lot of my online students, they have these print galleries, I do website audits and online teaching and stuff like that. And I see people with like hundreds of images to go through and it's just, it's just too much, it's overwhelming for people. And that's gonna be a theme today to simplify your options and make it as easy as possible for people to buy. So you don't want hundreds of images out there. So what I do is I narrow down my collection to about 15 images, and then five of the images are gonna be my hero images, my sort of best sellers, and those can change from time to time too, but I don't audit those, I don't analyze those as much as I'm going to the other 10. The other 10, I rotate out every quarter or so and have a theme behind them. Now, whatever theme works for you, you have to figure that out. For me, I have different themes about Vietnam because that's where I live, that's where a large body of my work is, but I also have themes based around wildlife photojournalism because that's something I do as well. So I might have rhinos one quarter, I might have elephants, I might have sloths, or I might just have a combination of all sorts of different animals, I don't know. So be creative with your themes limit your total number, rotate them out every once in a while based on sales, and then announce that you do that as well. And that serves a couple purposes because it also incentivizes people to buy now because in a couple months from now, those images might not be available for purchase. And now selecting those images, you also have to think deeply about it's a lot different than what's the best image to put out there compared to what's the best selling image. Now, a lot of my images that show people's faces, close up of people's faces, or any of my images that are rather depressing, while I might love those images, while they might tell a great story, while they might be my most impactful and powerful images, they're not necessarily my best sellers for people that wanna hang them on their wall and look at them every day. And then you also wanna limit the redundancy in your images as well. I see people in these galleries where it's like a monk in the same scene looking this way and then this way and then two monks looking this way. Like pick one, pick your best one and put that up there. And then if that's not selling, try one of the other ones. And then naming your images and adding a description. Keep it simple and then use your competitive advantage, whatever that may be. So for me, that's, I've shot a ton of images for the New York Times. So I might have a series where I might label that New York Times assignment shots or New York Times series, or this series was published in National Geographic. I put that in the title. I might also put that in the description as well. And then I play into my strengths too because I'm a photojournalist, because I've worked for a lot of the more respectable newspapers and magazines in the world. 
I'm going to use that as a competitive advantage. So I'm going to put that into my, not only my title, but in the description. And I'm also going to put that into my homepage and really talk about the authenticity of my images. Because right now AI is a big thing and some people might like that and some people might use that and some people might be creative in the way they use it and sell prints well that way. But that's not my thing. My thing is that my images are authentic. My images are real. They were shot on real assignments. They haven't been manipulated. I like to play into that because that's what I do. I'm playing to my strengths. I'm playing into what I do. Whatever that is for you, you have to figure that out. And then as far as sizes of images, I like to keep it simple. I pick an aspect ratio based on the aspect ratio of my sensor. So I've got a three by two sensor. So all of the sizes are going to conform to that sensor. So I've got an eight by 12 size. I've got a 12 by 18 size. I've got 16 by 24 and I've got 20 by 30. So just simple, four different sizes only and they relate to my sensor. So if you shoot with a film camera, you can check these charts online. If you shoot with a medium format camera just go online and check a reference chart or if you don't mind cropping you can do that as well as far as the paper type I just landed on luster and I described that as somewhere between matte and glossy I think that's easy for people to understand I think as photographers we get super excited about the different types of paper and all the different brand names of paper I find my clients don't know much about this at all, so I keep it simple I make a choice for them so I don't have to google stuff they're not leaving my website and then changing their mind I'm, again, I'm just feeding into like an impulse buy. I want them to buy right there when they're on their site, right when they're in the mood to buy. I don't want them to have to make too many decisions and then just give up. So luster paper, I describe what luster paper is because I think a lot of people don't necessarily know what it is. As far as the types of prints or mounting your print or framing your print, I don't do any of that. I just do just prints. Again, some people it works for them. For me, I live in Vietnam. I can't print myself. I can't ship myself from here. It's too much of a hassle with custom. I use a company in the US called Printique. And I do everything with them. And they do offer all sorts of different options. You can print on metal. You can print on cups. You can print on t-shirts. I, I don't want to deal with any of that. Again, I don't think that's what my audience likes. I'm trying different things, but I don't think that's what they like. And I just do prints and I do them borderless. And that's it. I don't deal with shipping frames because different frame sizes, glass is easy to break. There's just a whole bunch of hassle that goes along with it that I don't want to deal with. Now, again... This isn't my main business. This is just something I do on the side. I also like to add on there that my prints are not signed. I would love to be able to sign them. Again, the problems with shipping from Vietnam can't do that. And on that note, I should add too that all of my prints, and you're gonna have to make this decision, all of my prints on my website are open edition. It means I can print as many as possible and hence the lower price. Now, if you're doing addition prints, meaning you limit the number of prints you do for that image and for a certain size, you can sell those for a lot higher of a price. That's a whole different world and that would involve better quality printing. And now I do have some of my images that I sell through a gallery in New York that are limited edition and those sell for a much higher price. That requires a certificate of authenticity, so I have to sign that. It requires a higher level of printing. It requires keeping a record of all these images. It requires giving the gallery a percentage of the sale. It's a whole other world, and for many of you guys, you might not have access to it. If you do, go for it. If you really wanna limit your images, Hey, again, I don't know. I don't know what's going to work for you. So I, again, I have some images on there, a limited edition. All the images on my website are open edition. Of course, there's no crossover as well. Don't do that. I mean, none of the images that are self or limited edition are available on my website for open edition. Hope that's clear. Don't mess with that because you're going to ruin your reputation. And then as far as shipping, I ship to the US and Canada. I have tried shipping worldwide. I did that for a little while. That was just a pain in the butt of keeping a database of trusted vendors that I could use for shipping in different countries. Uh, it's just a lot. It's a lot of work. It was tough for me to manage quality control. It was tough for me to manage the pricing with shipping. So for now, I just use Printique. They only ship in the US and Canada. And then I also do custom shipping. I have a little note on my website, on my print store, that if you want any of the images, if you're interested in the images, the price will be similar. I use a company called Whitewall that I can print and ship to Europe and I do so by special request, but that barely gets into sales because again, that requires people having to do what I don't want them to have to do, which is send me an email, more exchanges, more chance for them to change their mind about buying a print less chance of that impulse buy. But for now, until I find a better solution for that, until I can automate it how I want to, that's how I'm gonna do it for now. But I am looking for a better solution to sell in Europe because I do have a decent amount of potential clients in that region. So as far as fulfillment and as far as hosting my online store, fulfillment, like I mentioned before, I use Printique. And then as far as my online store, where I sell the images, where people can purchase through PayPal or credit card, 
I use Squarespace. Other companies do the same thing. I just find these two companies integrate well. There's an extension for Printique, so you can set up the back end of your store on Printique and then host it on your online store on your website, which for me is Squarespace. So I set up the back end on Printique, I upload the high resolution images in there, put the sizes in there, and then that automatically syncs to Squarespace. Now I have found this a little bit buggy because Printique offers a ton of different options and for some reason, there's no way to like unclick those options. So if you pick like a certain type of printing, if you wanna print on metal, but you only wanna have two sizes on there and they offer 15 sizes, it will show all the other sizes that you don't offer is just out of stock. So it gets really confusing. It looks like you have a very unorganized store and a lot of things are out of stock. So my only workaround for that for the time being is to sync all the back end of my stuff and then update it on Squarespace and do everything manually there and then don't sync it again. I hope that makes sense. So in Squarespace, when someone puts the order in, there's a flat rate for shipping for US and Canada. It's $20, it's two weeks. I don't mess with customized shipping or different options. It's just one option, ground shipping. I look at myself like a small business, so I hope people can understand that. So I get a notification from Squarespace. The order came through. Squarespace keeps a whole backend organizational system. You can customize your invoices. The client gets a receipt online of their order. You get a notification. The order goes to Printy, and then you can set it up whether you wanna manually fulfill the order yourself and approve it, or you can automate that process or approve that process before it's shipped out just to double check make sure the crop is done right make sure the size is right make sure the address is right but that's really up to you a lot of people think that's like a real pain in the butt to do but once you've set up the back end it's actually not that hard to fulfill manually and trust me a lot of people think like you're not getting like tons of orders every single day or at least most people aren't so it's actually not that difficult to fulfill the order manually so you could just set up the shop manually on Squarespace and then fulfill them wherever you want in a company like Printique or another print shop that you wanna deal with or work with. I just find Printique affordable, easy, and I've been very happy with the quality. As far as the pricing, the sort of average in the market, I mean, people say the average is like a markup of 300%. So Printique does have these little calculators in there of how much it's gonna cost for printing and shipping, and then you can just put in, like I wanna mark it up 300%, 500%, 3,000%, whatever you want. I find for me about 500 or 700% works because printing's really cheap through them. So my lowest price on my eight by 12 is $100. My highest price on my 20 by 30 is $325. Now, speaking of inches and centimeters, I have everything listed in inches because my clients are in the US, but I also do have a conversion chart on there for people that are interested in centimeters. Now, when it comes to marketing and branding, this is where you really need to be creative. This is where you can close the gap with other professionals. I think, first of all, marketing strategies that work best, especially for amateurs, is to market locally, meaning market like within your family and friends first, and then work outwardly. The chances that some random person are gonna find your images online in another country, or chances that someone that doesn't know you personally buying your images in the beginning is really hard. So I think even for pros as well, people want that attachment. People want to be able to tell a story when they print and hang that picture up. Oh, I know this guy. Oh, he works in Vietnam. Oh, he shoots for the New York Times. Oh, this picture was in National Geographic. Whatever your version of that is, market it, sell it, be creative with it. So for me, again, like I said, I'm putting that in my branding all the way throughout, in the title, in the description, on my homepage. It's all on there. And then in addition to that, it's a hustle. Like anything in photography or anything that's really competitive and saturated like the print market is, you have to be extremely creative. You have to hustle constantly. So little things that I do is I use overlays just so people can envision what the picture looks like. Rather than just having the picture on my website, I've got the picture and I've got overlays that I use through a company called Canva. If you don't know what Canva is, oh my goodness, I absolutely love Canva. They're not sponsoring this either. Man, I praise all these companies and they don't give me a cent, but that's all right. I believe in them, I like them, and I wanna share them with you guys. Canva is a graphic design company sort of for dummies online. You pay a monthly subscription fee and you can have all these fantastic templates. I use them for my PDFs, for my workshop, my thumbnails, and these overlays. Basically, these overlays just make it easy for people to envision what your pictures look like in a living room. They have like furniture in these frames, and you just drop them in, it's super easy. So setting up the store might seem overwhelming. I would say, for me, when I just transitioned to this new setup, it took me two full work days to set up the back end and put everything in. It really wasn't that hard, and it's actually kind of fun to do. So that's setting up all the prices, setting up the store, setting up the overlays. But then you're not done there. I should add another thing as well, as far as having a store like Squarespace, it costs more than just having your average Squarespace website. So if you wanna have e-commerce, meaning you wanna be able to accept credit cards and you wanna be, be able to accept payments and list products, 
that is a higher fee per month. You can check out, they have all sorts of different packages, but for me, it's worth it because I don't just sell prints on there. I sell presets, I sell my workshops, I sell my one-on-one -on -one classes. That's a good time for you to actually check all this out at Ask Mop by Justin Mop. I sell a lot through the website and people will complain, oh, they take a cut. Yeah, they do, but for me, I don't have a better and cheaper system that works. This works well for me. Yes, I pay extra per month to have e-commerce capabilities on my website. Yes, they take a fee of every transaction. It'd be better if they didn't, but they do, and I don't have a better option. So I could complain about it all I want or just not have a store. So this is what works for me. You could just list things on a free website and then have people pay you via PayPal. But again, I find I generate more sales when people can buy right there on my website without having to email me or without having to go to a separate website and leave my sort of ecosystem. So that's what works for me. I don't know if it works for you. And now again, with all that that I said, you're still not done there. There's still more. In addition to having overlays, you have to market, you have to hustle, you have to get the word out. You have to try different things. I mean, I made this fun video now that lives on my website where I'm carrying a print around. I'm trying to be creative with my advertising. I have to constantly announce things on Instagram, make these little fun reels, play around with different options, announce it here on my YouTube channel. It's a hustle, it's a grind. And again, in the end, I don't make a ton off of it. I make a little bit, I have my archive working for me. I wouldn't call it passive income like a lot of people do. You, you do have to hustle to make it work and you do have to be creative, but I don't know, I find it fun, I find it worth it. I don't want my images just sort of sitting there. I think there's a market for it. I'm still tweaking it, I'm always trying to evolve. I think for you guys, you have to figure out what works for you. Again, I would recommend keeping it as simple as possible for you. More importantly, keeping it as simple as possible for your potential customers. Start to market, start to sell locally, whether that's through conversations with friends, whether that's going to your local cafe or a friend who owns a restaurant that needs some artwork for the walls, and then expand, and then maybe you can have collections that you're pitching to different businesses. Network, you gotta network. Like any small business, and anything that's competitive, and anything that's saturated, you've gotta hustle, you've gotta network, you've gotta market, and you've gotta build a system that works for you and for them. So that's the updated version of my store. Don't wanna BS you guys and make it seem like I make millions of dollars every single month selling prints, because I don't. I make a decent amount, and I make more now that I follow some of the things that I said that I do today, and I'm trying to make more, and I'm working on it, and as I do and find new things, I'll share those things with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Check out my print store, buy a print. All right, you don't have to buy a print, but check it out. You can have a look, take some ideas from me, or don't. Share with me your website in the comments section. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day.